All right, section 8.7, we're doing operations now. What am I talking about with operations? My four main operations, I just said them. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. All right, so here's some important information that's going to be really helpful, not just for today, because like I said, we're splitting this up into a two-day lesson. So um, we, we're going to cover a decent amount of this tomorrow too. All right, you cannot add or subtract. Think of common denominators. You can't add and subtract uncommon denominators. You can't add or subtract in scientific notation unless the exponents are the same, okay? So you could think of that like powers of 10. If they're different powers of 10, they're not the same number, all right? So your exponents have to be the same. So what if you're adding or subtracting and your exponents are different, all right? So again, I'm gonna draw a comparison to fractions. So with fractions, when you're adding and subtracting, you have to find a what? A common what? Denominator, right? So when you're adding and subtracting a scientific notation, you're going to find a common power, a common exponent. So there's a rule. If I need to bump my exponent value up, meaning maybe I have 10 to the third, and then over here I have 10 to the fourth, and I want to increase this one. If I want to increase it, I will move my decimal to the left. So increase, I move my decimal to the left, and the number being multiplied. And again, I'm going to get more to this um, in a later example, but that's my rule. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with common exponents. So example one, I'm going to have the same exponents. Here's what my rule says. If my exponents are the same power, does everybody agree? Both of these numbers are being multiplied by 10 to the third power. Mm -hmm. Everybody see that? Okay. So my rule says, if they're both in the same power, I can simply add or do whatever operation is in between them. So in this case, it's addition. So I can say 4.6, I'm gonna put a zero there, plus 8.72. All right, go ahead and add those two together. And you can just do it by hand. We're not, we're not doing a calculator. It's just, it's too, too basic math, guys. So two, and then a 14, and then a 13. So I get 13.42. 13.42 times 10 to the third power. Does everybody see how I got 13.42? Up. Oh. <laughs> okay, thirteen point three two. For some reason, I like mentally carry to one. I don't know why I did that. Okay, thirteen point three two times ten to the third power. I was thinking of the next step before I explained that one. All right, everybody here. This is not your final answer. This number is not in scientific notation. Can anybody tell me why? Oh, oh, oh. Taylor? Because the number is bigger than 10. This number is bigger than 10. It's too big. Where does my decimal need to go to put this number in scientific notation? Where does it need to go, guys? In front of the one in the Yes, after the leading digit. All right, so here's what my rule says. If I need to move my decimal one more to the left, it increases my power by however many places I moved it. So I moved it one, I need to increase my power. It's like a, it's like a pulley system, right? So if I bump my decimal to the left, it increases my power by one. 1 1.332 times 10 to the fourth power. This is your full credit answer, all right? So we've got to watch that, especially with addition. All right, especially with addition. A lot of times when I add two numbers in scientific notation, once I add them, that number is going to be more than 10. All right, look at this next one. Yes, Selinda. Okay, so when you're, when you're 
like, so you know, like how it has to be less than 10, right? So to get this correct, you just put it like in between the, the beginning and like. It's always going to be after that first digit. And then up, up the power? But if you, yeah, so if you have to bump it like that, then it increases your power. Okay, so okay. like if it's, if um, the whole number is like 100, mm -hmm. then I bump it up to? Yes, you would. Okay. It would only be that big if you're multiplying, because remember, in the original problem, they have to be in scientific notation. So you're always going to be dealing with, in the original problem, a number between 1 and 10. But with multiplication, sometimes you, uh, I can't really think of any, actually, because 9 times 9 is 81. So you're probably always going to be less than 100. But yes, it's the same concept. Okay? All right. So now on this next one, what operation do you see in between the two expressions? What operation do you see? Subtraction. Subtraction. So what my rule says is as long as my exponents are the same. Now my exponents are negative. But that's okay, because remember, I'm just going to keep my common exponent when I'm adding and subtracting. So because it's subtraction, I'm going to take the larger absolute value. Sometimes it will not be the first one, okay? Which number is the larger absolute value, 7.8 or 4.5? Which one? Okay, 7.8. So I'm going to do 7.8 minus 4.5. <clears throat> What's 8 minus 5? What's 7 minus 4? Okay. So 3.3 times 10 to the negative fifth power. I just bring down my common power. That's all I'm doing here. Is this number in scientific notation? Yes. I'm done. Okay, that's it, and I'm done. Any questions? Any questions on example one? Oh, All right, feeling good? Okay, now example two, we're going to multiply in scientific notation. Do you see the multiplication here in the middle? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to use the fraction example again. Do I have to have common denominators to multiply fractions? No. No, you don't. Good job, good job. Okay, so you do not have to have common powers to multiply in scientific notation. So don't worry about 10 to the negative fifth is different than 10 to the negative second. That's okay. You don't have to have common powers. So what my rule says, okay, I'm going to use what's called commutative property. All right, I'm going to group my whole numbers together. 3 times 5. Let me change the color. 3 times 5. I'm going to rearrange this. <clears throat> times 10 to the negative fifth power times 10 to the negative second power. Wait, what? Okay, so what I did was I just took my powers of 10 and I put them together. And I took my numbers and I put them together. Everybody good? You see what I did there? Yeah. All right. What's 3 times 5? What's 3 times 5? 15, right? Everybody with me? Now I can use product of powers. You guys remember product of powers? I can add exponents that have the same base. Do both of them have the same base? Yeah. Yes, they're both 10. So what's negative 5? plus negative 2. Negative 7. Negative 7. They're both negative. Same sign. Add and keep. Negative 5 plus negative 2 is negative 7. So times 10 to the negative 7th power. Don't say anything out loud. Is this my final answer? I want you to answer it in your mind. Is this answer written in scientific notation? No. Where does my decimal, somebody raise your hand and tell me, where does my decimal need to go, Tristan? Between the 1 and the 5. And what's my rule? If I move my decimal to the left, what happens to my power? It increases by 1. Be careful with your negative. 
What's negative 7 plus 1? Negative 6. You guys paying attention? Times negative 10 to the negative 6 power. Okay. All right. I want you guys to try the second one on your own. Once you solve it, I want you to turn to a neighbor and compare your answer with your neighbor. Okay, so we multiply. What is 12 times 6? 72. 72. I should be noticing that number. All right, now our powers of 10, my rule says I can add exponents with the same base. So what's 4 plus 8? Do not forget, did you remember to write your base? Your base of 10. Did you guys remember that? My 1 didn't write. All right, so 72 times 10 to the 12th. But, Tyler, what do I need to do now because this number is not quite in scientific notation? Very good. And then what happens to my power? Very good. So if I move my decimal to the left, I increase my power by 1. All right, thumbs up if you guys got that one. Did you guys get it? Okay, all right, very good. Now we're going to divide. So we have decimals that we're dividing, and yes, you are going to do this by hand, okay? Now, when you're dividing these decimals, we're only talking one or two digits. They're going to divide really nicely, um, but you are going to show this work, which means you're going to show the work on your homework assignment for tomorrow as well, all right? So we have 1.8 divided by 6. So... Yeah, so 1.8 divided by 6. Look how simple this is going to be, guys. 1.8 goes on the inside, divided by 6. All right, does 6 go into 1? No. So that's a 0. Bring your decimal up. Does 6 go into 18? Yes, 3 times. So I simplified this to, to 0.3. That took me about 10, 15 seconds. Okay. No, 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 no. It's not my final answer. That's just the number part. All right. Now, if I add my powers when I'm multiplying, what do you think is going to happen when I have a quotient of powers? You're going to subtract your powers. So be careful on this. You want to make sure negative 8 minus 7. What's negative 8 minus 7? Negative 15. All right, so 0. 0.3 times 10 to the negative 15th power. Now something different is happening. We haven't seen this happen yet. Now I have a number less than 1. Remember, for scientific notation, my, my value has to be greater than 1 but less than 10. Is 0 0.3 greater than 1? No, it's not. So which way do I need to move my decimal? To the right. So if I'm moving my decimal to the right to make it 3, what do you think happens to your power? It needs to go down. You need to subtract your power by 1 because you moved it one place value. All right, so what's negative 15 minus 1? All right, so 3 times 10. Did you remember to write your base to the negative 16th power? All right, any questions? Yes. Um, I mean, no, because you can have a decimal in your dividend. And if you do that, you're going to forget to move your power. You would have to move your power in the original problem if you did that, so don't do that. But that's a great question. Keaton? Why don't we, why don't we move the decimal to the right? We had to move it to the right because 0 0.3 is not greater than one. Oh. And for it to be in scientific notation, it has to be greater than one. All right, Taylor. You are in the second part of the lesson. Um, there is sometimes, it's hard to explain, but when I'm trying to get common exponents, sometimes I will move it twice. But most of the time, I only have to move it one place. 
with the division, you're never going to have to move it more than once. Okay? All right, oh, Anna, stay with high. me. Stay with me. Okay? All right, last one. I want you guys to do this one on your own and then compare your answers. Okay, it's got to be written the opposite. It's got to be 7.5 divided by 1.5. My bad, guys, my bad. All right, now the divisor can't have a decimal. So you bump the decimal out. How many times does 15 go into 75? Uh, five. five times. Five times. All right. Or maybe it was supposed to be that way, and then you would have ended up with a tiny decimal. Let's just do it the other way. It's not a big deal. 1.5 and 7.5. I didn't know how to do that. So, well, once you bump it out, you have to add a zero. No, it's still going to be a whole number. 75 goes into 150 twice. So either way you did it, whether you got two or five, which is what we got originally, you're still going to have a whole number. Okay? Now, well, no, whatever way it's written. Whatever way it's written. I thought it was a typo at first, but it, it works out to be a whole number either way. Okay? So what are you going to do for your, now this is important, guys, you're dividing. So even though it's written next to each other, what do you do with your exponents? Do you add them or subtract them? This is division. You will subtract them. This is negative 3 minus 2. 2 times 10 to the negative 5th power. 2 times negative, or 10 to the negative 5th power. All right? So even though they're written side by side, I still remember that it's division, so I must subtract my exponents. Keaton? How'd you get 2? I didn't get 2. Yeah, I got five. Well, if you switch it around, if you switch it around, you get five. If you do 7.5 in the middle and 1.5 on the outside, that's what I was doing to begin with. You'll get five. Don't worry about that so much, okay? Either way, you ended up with a whole number, so you did not have to bump your decimal like we did in the first one. You always divide the first number on the inside divided by the second number on the outside, always. Okay? We'll do more practice before you guys have a homework assignment on this. Okay? So tomorrow is going to be more practice with this, and then we find common exponents. So that's going to be it for today for part one. Oh.